In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how Register Effect allows us to create reusable and customizable effects that we can call directly on timelines. I'll show you how I can call my own custom effect using animation.rainbow, pass in heading 1 as the target, and voila, there we go. I'll then add another animation with a custom Y value and colors. Pretty cool. Alright, so we have a similar setup to the previous wrap example, but we have a heading 1 and a heading 2 here that we're going to animate with our custom effect. So let's go into our JavaScript and we're going to say gsap.registereffect. And when we call this function, we're going to pass in a configuration object. The first thing we're going to do is name our effect. I'm going to call it rainbow and with this name that's how we're going to access it in the future and where all the action happens is going to be inside this effect property okay what we're going to do here is define a function that is going to run and create and return our animation for it okay so inside this function we're going to do all of our heavy lifting whenever we call this effect we're going to pass in the targets that are going to be animated and optionally a configuration object. All right, so anywhere inside the body of this function, targets is going to refer to the things that are going to be animated or whatever DOM element or selector string was passed in. So let's just keep this really simple and I'm going to say return gsap.from and we'll just say targets and I'm going to say, I don't know, opacity of zero and we'll say y of minus 100. Once I have this effect defined, I can then call it. So inside my init function, what I'm going to do is say gsap.effects.rainbow, and I'm going to pass in heading one as my selector text. Now I'm going to run and keep an eye on Bob's ice cream. Woo! I've just configured my first gsap effect, all right? I'm saying that we're going to call the rainbow effect and pass in this target. And where I've defined the effect, I'm saying that that target is going to animate from an opacity of zero and a Y of negative 100. So now that we have the basic setup down, let's make it a little bit more fancy, all right? Inside this function, we're also gonna split that target apart. So I'm gonna say, let split equal, we'll do a new split text. And the target of this is going to be targets, that's what we're passing in, and we're just going to say that the type is going to be cars or characters, all right? And then in my little gsap return function, I can say we can animate, you know, as we've done before, we'll say split dot cars, and we'll make this a little bit of a stagger 0 0.05, okay? That's going to be so much nicer. And now you'll see when it runs, we get that cool stagger effect, not too shabby. If I want to run the same effect on some different text, well, I can come down here and we can say something like just copy and do a paste. And now I'll also do it on the heading two. So let's run. And now you're going to see that we have all of it come down at the same time. All right. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So now that the effect is built, we can now tweak it a little bit. Um, I want to have a more complex animation here. So instead of returning a simple tween, we're going to return a timeline with multiple tweens. So let's do let TL equal GSAP dot timeline, all right? And so we already have this tween written here. So I'm just going to grab it out. We're going to go copy. We'll get rid of this. And we're going to say something like TL dot from. So that's going to animate the characters in and then we're also going to create a tween that's going to colorize them all right so i'm going to say dot two and again we're going to do split dot cars as the targets and we're going to say that the color is going to be as we did in the last exercise gsap dot utils dot wrap and here i'm going to just put a very simple array we'll do our aqua and then we'll do a pink and we'll say we'll also do yellow. And we'll also put a stagger on here of, I don't know, 0 0.05, and we'll start this animation at the same time. So we've just sort of spruced up the animation that we're doing, and once we have that timeline built, we're going to return it. 
So let's run. And if I didn't do any gross typos, this might actually work. Woo! There we go. So we have Bob's Ice Cream, a rainbow of flavors, all right? We're adding the same effect to two different headings. All right, so I've got the effect built, and down here I have the effects running at the same time. Well, what if I wanted to sequence these effects in a timeline? Well, we could do something like this where I could say let animation equal gsaf.timeline and then my timeline could look something like animation.add and then we would wrap it inside of the add like that, okay? And then we could do another add down below and this should play those animations one after the other, all right? Because we're basically chaining them now inside this animation timeline. So let's run and then you'll see the heading one comes in and then the heading two. So we pretty much have a sequence. The first effect runs and then the second one runs because we added them in this fashion. Now, this is quite a bit of code to write and what's really awesome about these effects is that you can add them to the timeline in a much simpler fashion. Check this out. I'm gonna go up here to where we're registering the effect. I'm gonna add a property called extend timeline set it to true and then watch this this sort of clunky timeline code that i wrote here i'm going to get rid of it all together and i'm just going to say animation dot rainbow and i'm going to pass in heading one and then i'm going to chain on rainbow heading two all right so we have an animation timeline and we're just chaining these two effects with two different targets let's run and check out how cool that is. Isn't that amazing? Just this little code here. So I'm gonna really just break this up onto two lines because in real life, that's probably how it would be. Next, let's talk about effect defaults and customizations. These effects are highly customizable through use of the config object, which allows us to optionally pass in properties and values that we wanna use inside our effect. Now imagine for this effect, we wanna be able to customize the Y value that the letters fall down from, okay? So for something like this, before we pass in a config object, we're gonna set some defaults, okay? And this default object is going to have a Y value and we'll set negative 100 as the default, all right? Let me add my little comma here. And then inside of this animation, instead of having it hard coded in there, I'm gonna say, let's use config.y, all right? And the way this works is if a config object is not passed in, it's going to use the default value. So now when I run, both of the tweens or the effects on the heading one and heading two should come in from negative 100, all right? They're both coming in from high up. Now let's say that a rainbow of flavors for the heading two, we don't want there to be any Y movement at all, all right? So the default is Y of negative 100, but when we do the animation on the heading two, when I call rainbow heading two, I'm gonna pass in a config object and I'm gonna say the Y is going to be zero. What is that gonna do? Well, let's run. And now you'll see the top one comes in from the Y and the bottom one just has the rainbow color effect, all right? So the top one, we drop down from a Y of negative 100 and the bottom one just appears. So now you can see exactly how flexible that is. I could say, you know what? Let's make the Y come in from the bottom maybe just from 50. So we'll run, and you can probably imagine what's gonna happen, top, bottom. How awesome is that? I've just created a completely customizable effect that I can configure with different properties and values, and I can call it on a timeline by just saying rainbow heading one. If I want these two effects to be synchronized and start at the same time, I can just add a position parameter of zero after the config object. Let's run, and now we're going to have our super cool rainbow effect. I love it, I'm literally smiling here. Now one last thing before I go, for an effect like this, it would probably make sense for you to be able to define what colors you want in your rainbow, right? So I went ahead and in my default, I added a colors property and the same colors that we were using previously. In my tween here, inside of the wrap, we're using config.colors, all right? So 
If we don't pass in a colors array, we're gonna use this one. So now, in my heading two here, in this config objects that I'm passing in, I can say something like, you know, colors, and I'm just going to do a magic paste of some hexadecimal colors, and let's run, and what are we going to get? You'll see now that our rainbow is fully customizable. How awesome is this? So hopefully you'll enjoy building something like this yourself. You can use this file as a template and you can show me exactly the crazy effects that you build. Once you have an effect built, you can use it throughout your project and you can create as many effects as you want. So get to it and let me see those effects. If you enjoyed this video, check out my Creative Coding Club course bundle. You'll get instant access to tons of videos and demos to help you master the GreenSock animation platform. New content is added every week to keep your learning fresh and exciting. Watch this video below to learn more. I have tons of free videos on my channel too, so be sure to subscribe to stay in the loop. Thanks for watching.